Well, hello investors. This is the video log. It takes 30,000 to a million. And after I show you the review, the account and all my positions and the fact that I've been losing to the market recently, I got to update on the account for sure. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Apple and Smith & Wesson actually came out with its earnings recently. So that's what's on the agenda now. And, and obviously the Apple um, announcement of all the products coming in this holiday season so without further ado let's go into the account this is it i'm sitting at 188 and a half a little bit below market uh, performance here in the past week and month i want to say but we'll check that to know for sure in a second if you want to just um listen to the apple and smith and wesson commentary you can switch you can fast forward through this until you see my face full on the screen but I'm going to go through the positions quickly. You can uh, just pause the video at any moment to try to figure out the exact positions here. You'll see that I have all the information you might need in these little boxes here. Uh, big losses on the Smith & Wesson puts. And it's going to be even bigger tomorrow because SWBI is down after hours after earnings. So this credit spread might get blown out as well. So... So this is the option positions, and then here are the equities. I only have five positions at the moment. Apple is down 0.6, even though the market was up. That's not good. Realty income was down 2.59. That's whatever. Main Street um, capital was up half a percent. Paramount's down 1.35, going against market as well. And Smith and Wesson down 7.37, including the after hours movement. So that's quite a bit. Um, here's the account tab. The investing tab brother current total money under management here is two hundred and twelve thousand dollars almost the margin is at eleven point zero five percent it's sticking up because the valuation of the accounts going down but the margin is still staying the same that's how it works unfortunately so that means i am more in debt as proportion of the account as it was in the last couple weeks so these are my positions sorted by total return and then sorted by equity. Apple's by far the greatest position, four times larger than Main Street Capital. But Smith & Wesson is about, let me see if you can see this, yeah. Smith & Wesson is about to be my biggest position actually because I'm going to be, well, close to my biggest or biggest. I'm going to be purchasing um, by September 16th. If things don't go my way, I'm going to be purchasing 60 800 shares of Smith & Wesson brands. I'm going to be a 0.02% owner of the company, which is enormous. All right, so that's the account. Oh, actually, I got to measure the performance. So against the S&P 500, let's see. So today, minus 1.27 without the after hours, minus 4.35 on the week, minus 7.42 on the month. And about 1% up on the three months. Let's see how the S&P did. I think I'm getting killed by the S&P, which is really disheartening. I do not want to be losing to the S&P 500, that's for sure. So down, obviously, S&P is up today. I was down, which is really bad. Okay, so one week, S&P wins. One month wins. Three month. I think I won in the three month because I'm still even, right? On the year, though, I'm definitely winning. Um... SP is down 11% and I am still up 5.58, but the difference is shrinking. And it's mainly due to Apple. Apple's been underperforming the market. So actually, let's just break it here. Let's start talking about Apple. So Apple's been under uh, underperforming the market, unfortunately. And it's it had a, a tiny bit of a run up up to the announcements about their older new products. They came up with a bunch of new products. Uh, some of the main takeaways of the news releases is that they're gonna have like four phones, um, kind of their standard versions for the iPhone 14, and then two pro versions um, with the most expensive version, the Pro Max, which I care about is going to be priced at $1,100, which is not an increase from last year. And I think that that's actually a, a bit of a mistake, even though there aren't that many new features. There is a visual update, which I think is personally very important. 
And I think that a lot of people are going to go for it just because of the visual update. It's my opinion. I know a lot of people say they don't care, but um, I think it's going to be at least some marginal percentage boost because of that. And also it has a lot of cool safety features and um, things like that, like emergency satellite connectivity, crash detection, emergency SOS calling when you're unable to call. So it's got a really cool like safety features. And I think that many customers will buy the phones for that for their loved ones, like especially for their kids, um, you know, they're, so get ready to see a lot of high schoolers with, you know, the uh, iPhone Pro, um, a thousand buck device, bucks device in their pocket. And um, I think a lot of people will buy it for their elderly as well. And but most of all for the kids, because then they can even track them when there's no signal. So I think it's going to be a big deal. Um, you know, for the more well-off, obviously, for the more well-off consumers out there, which Apple consumers tend to be a little bit on the upper side, anyways, of the socioeconomic spectrum. So, that's about Apple. has been drifting down, I think, mainly because it's a little bit overvalued, uh, you know, by any metric, but I don't think that is overvalued based on, like, two years from now. Especially after this uh, holiday season, I do expect the next two quarters to be really strong. I think that the sales from this new phone are going to bleed for about a week into the uh, quarter results. And then the holiday season is going to be all next quarter. And I think that quarter is going to be absolutely monstrous. Um, So let's see if that happens. Um, But I expect a lot. And I think people are going to be surprised at how strong it is. Could be wrong, but I'm definitely betting that I'm not wrong, obviously, by the account concentration in the Apple stock. So we'll find out. Um, next on the trapping block is Smith & Wesson. So let's go to Smith & Wesson here. So this is Apple, by the way. Um, this is one day, one week, one month is down 5.66. Pretty bad. Three months, it's still up 4.07%. But in the month and week is not doing well relative to the markets. All right, let's go to uh, Smith & Wesson here. We'll talk a little bit about that. So it had a pretty, it's pretty poor, you know, negative 9.31% performance on the on the week. But the day is, most of that is, you know, minus 7.43%, including the after hours movement. It was down as far as 12.12, 12, 21%. Um, because the earnings came in at 11 cents maybe you can see it here they came in at 11 cents earnings per share versus the expected thing like 20 cents or something like that um so it was worse than anticipated or i guess estimate was 0.34 percent um cents per share but i actually read on other ex- on other sites, the expectation was about twenty cents, but either way, it disappointed by quite a bit on the earnings side and also on the revenue side. So it was kind of a big drop. I think it was about like sixty nine cents or some I'm sixty nine percent or something like that drop in overall revenue year over year. Uh, so the whole you know two thousand twenty twenty one effect is like completely gone. Um, but the thing is like they made three point three million dollars i think in earnings um or it was a free cash flow i don't know one of the others but which is still a pretty good amount like i was calculating it and i was thinking like okay so the business is worth 500 million well now it's worth less um x the cash that they have on hand which is about 100 million so that business of of 500 million if it just if it makes this much amount of money 3.3 million um per quarter right that's like what 18 20 something no 6 uh 12 13 like 14 million per year that's pretty low but the thing is it's still making money like that's actually not bad com- compared to some of the high flying you know growth stocks that may not ever actually make money and this is a pretty low scenario for smith and wesson they're not going to be making 3.3 million every quarter on the earnings call they mentioned that um their 
This is the weakest period of the year, so they expect the least amount of earnings and revenue. And you know their products are going to be shining for the next um, a couple of quarters. This is a very cyclical business and it's got its own risks, but I really like that this company is conservative. And they don't like to get into debt. They like to hold large amounts of cash on their balance sheet. And um, that is kind of like their tradition, their core value here, okay, as the way they run their company. And having it as collateral is, you know, they have a really strong brand. Um, so their brand is, is really good in the industry. And I think that that, will, that that means a lot and it carries a lot. That's a, lo a large part of the valuation of the company in my mind. So key points, the performance will improve as time goes on into the next quarters. 3.3 uh, million ain't even that bad. The company is only half a billion market cap or less now, right? It just decreased by like another 10% or something. So it's going to be in the low 400s. So for that much valuation it's actually making a good amount of money and i wouldn't mind holding the company for a long term because the company has been around for 160 years or more i don't know somewhere over 150 and it's still going to be around it's going to be around they're resilient they maneuver they keep innovating they keep coming out with new products and um it looks like it sounds like they're managing everything okay there's hiccups always because of unprecedented times and, you know, the circumstance throwing curveballs at virtually every company in the last couple of years. But they're coming out of it. And um, I think that uh, they're going to be solid. Um, you know, initially, I thought the company was probably worth more like $20 per share. But now I actually think it's probably worth more like 15 or 16 uh, because I didn't anticipate this much reverse reversion is that a word reversal no reversion to the norms i thought that because they were they're able to increase the prices on the products by a little bit that their profitability will be uh, improved permanently but it looks like that that effect is not going to be very large so i'm going to have to probably lower my estimate of what I think this company is worth, but I still really like it. I wouldn't mind actually holding it forever, um, unless obviously it goes downhill for whatever reason, but um, I wouldn't mind as it is, I wouldn't mind holding it for a very long time. So definitely don't hate the fact that I'm gonna have as a collateral. I just hate the fact that I'm probably not gonna make a lot of money out of it. <laughs> that's really the downside. But that's my commentary on Smith & Wesson. Uh, if, you're really in if you're interested in a position, this is what it looks like, I have a, I have a put credit spread five of them and then um, you can see here that I actually have $86,000 in collateral ready to buy shares of Smith & Wesson and then I've also put put up the 1200 shares that I have as collateral for call options they're going to expire on the 16th so both all the plays are going to expire on the 916 September 16th which is going to be a very huge day for my account so look out for that video after uh, September 16th. Okay, so that's the update and some commentary on Apple and Smith & Wesson, my two biggest positions at the moment. Everything else like Main Street Capital and Realty Income is moving the way it should be. It's on par. So um, with that said, I think I'm going to end right here. Peace out.